Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with immigration attorney Brian D. Lerner. Um, while it's happened several days ago, um, I thought I would uh, make a video on uh, the decision that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals issued in regards to uh, Trump's travel ban on primarily seven Muslim countries. And uh, you know, this will continue uh, my series on the Trump executive orders, but I wanted to uh, clarify uh, why uh, the Ninth Circuit ruled like it did and so forth and, and make a couple comments um, in regards to those in opposition of the uh, Ninth Circuit. Um, I have found that the vast majority of people who are opposing the Ninth Circuit decision essentially say, st say stuff like the Ninth Circuit is the most liberal court in the nation. They get turned over more than any other circuit court by the Supreme Court. Um, they're just a bunch of liberal judges, you know, and so forth and so on. And uh, when, uh, you know, asked if they read the actual decision, um, their answers are ranging from no to they don't need to, the to it's not going to change a thing. Um, it simply uh, is a matter of, uh, you know, opposing the entire f decision itself without having read a single word of the decision itself. Now, the decision itself is 29 pages long. So... The Ninth Circuit did not just, uh, you know, get together for five minutes and say, denied. Okay, they didn't do that. They reasoned it out. They gave their explanations as to why. And they explained essentially why, on the merits of the action, it was unlikely that Trump would succeed. And that's why they agreed with the U.S. District Court judge in Washington uh, who issued the original uh, injunction on the travel ban. So what I thought I would do is just go through briefly the decision itself, why they ruled like they did, uh, and hopefully enlighten uh, those uh, who, you know, which is fine that they want to disagree with it. But if you're going to have a discussion and disagreement uh, on it, perhaps reading the decision itself might be helpful. So first, uh, the whole issue was whether or not the states had standing to bring the lawsuit in the first place against the ban. Um, and uh, that's called standing. So standing is essentially when someone's in court trying to fight for something, whether they are being damaged in any way in order to actually bring the lawsuit. So uh, there were several cases that were brought up. A lot of them dealt with the universities, how students uh, couldn't get back, how professors couldn't get back, uh, visiting professors, um, families of students, families of professors, how lawful permanent residents couldn't get back. Uh, you know, and one thing on that, um, you know, once it was, you know, in total disarray, the, the first weekend that order came out um, and lawful permanent residents were being barred from entering the U.S., which is unheard of. Um, you know, the uh, all of a sudden they backtracked and said, OK, this basically doesn't apply to lawful permanent residents. And they argued that to the Ninth Circuit that, well, it doesn't really apply to lawful permanent residents, except the executive order itself has the words that it does apply to lawful permanent residents. And you can't exactly just take the word of an arguing attorney for the Trump administration that, you know, a lawful permanent resident would not uh, have been stopped again. I, uh, you know, on a side note, I can't tell you how many people have come into my office as residents afraid to leave the country, which personally, I never thought I would see that day. But, uh, you know, obviously, if the, the people qualify for naturalization to become a citizen, now they should do it uh, just in case something like this happens again. You, you don't know. Uh, so 
with the standing, uh, the court uh, discussed how obviously lawful permanent residents have rights uh, under the Constitution in the United States. So that's one reason that people from all over the world want to come to the United States because we in the United States give rights under the Constitution to people who are here uh, in the United States. Now, that does not, and this is in the Ninth Circuit decision, that does not just apply to lawful permanent residents. It applies to people who uh, have visas. It applies to uh, people who are non immigrants, and it even applies to people who are here illegally. They have rights, okay? Um, and so you can't just, and this is the Ninth Circuit talking, you can't just ignore all of those people who have been given rights under the U.S. Constitution and sweep them under the carpet and essentially say you can't come in, or if you go, you can't come back. So um, the court ruled that there was sufficient standing for the states to bring the lawsuit. Uh, the next stop, the next part of the decision dealt with the reviewability of the executive order itself. So the question was, does the Ninth Circuit have the legal capacity to review a decision made by uh, the president of the United States via an executive order. And Trump's team was arguing, and they brought this up like at least three times in the decision. Trump's team was arguing that via executive order, the president can order whatever he wants, period. Okay. And that the Ninth Circuit doesn't have the right to review it, let alone whether it's constitutional or not constitutional. The Trump team argued the Ninth Circuit has no legal authority to review a, de uh, a decision made in, or an order made through an executive order. Well, the Ninth Circuit uh, clearly and unambiguously threw that argument out and said, yes, of course they have the review and the capability and the authority uh, to review a decision, especially for the constitutionality of that particular order. So <clears throat> if the president of the United States issues an executive order, which is unconstitutional, then it is the duty, the obligation, and the right of the courts to rule that it's unconstitutional and order that it be stopped, which is what happened here. Um, you know, the, the laws, the statutes, the regs can't just be thrown out ad hoc uh, because a president wants to do something. It needs to be constitutional, which is the basis of our government. If, if Trump had succeeded on that and had essentially uh, succeeded in stating that the courts have absolutely no right to review an executive order that he puts out, well... You know, that's called a dictatorship, okay? That is when uh, no longer are there uh, checks and balances. Um, we can see the absolute uh, foresight of our founding fathers when they made the three branches of government and they made the checks and balances so no branch of government uh, will exceed the authority that it has been given and it is checked and can be checked by other branches of government. So as you can see, after all the lawsuits piled in, after the Washington uh, District Court issued the uh, ban across the whole, the injunction on the ban across the whole country, after the Ninth Circuit agreed with the Washington uh, court and so forth, that the pace of the executive orders has tremendously slowed down, which, you know, from a uh, constitutional point of view is great. It means that uh, Trump and his team are now reviewing much more carefully uh, any further executive orders to try to make sure that they are constitutional. And that is the effect of uh, checks and balances, which is great. So there were that would dealt with the review. Uh, the Ninth Circuit ruled that they do have the authority to review an executive order. Um, there was other parts of the decision 
One was that uh, it uh, was discriminatory. Um, there was uh, items in there dealing with how uh, if somebody was uh, coming into the United States seeking asylum based on Christian uh, uh, persecution, that they would be given priority. Well, that clearly was religious discrimination because it discounted all the other religions that uh, exist and to as to why somebody might be coming into the United States in order to uh, seek asylum. Next, the court ruled that the balance of hardships uh, much more favored uh, in a much higher degree the states and the public and that uh, they stated that the Trump team had not shown any evidence whatsoever at, in support of their arguments as to why that particular executive order needed to be executed right then and there. So the bottom line is that the uh, Ninth Circuit decision um, is a significant victory in so far as it clearly shows uh, the checks and balances are still in effect. They're working, they're doing what they need to do, and they will continue to do so um, as long as our Constitution is still in effect. Okay, more on the coming videos.